Here is another video that I put together from a couple of our older videos to try and answer a viewer's question who was having a problem with both of these videos. So let's go ahead and get started. And if you notice one side of the roof is higher than the other side and they would like to add a patio. And if they were going to do it like this with a solid beam going all the way across and parallel to both of the walls, then you might do it this way. And I went ahead and I left the seat cuts in here on the rafters to help you get a better idea of what I'm doing. And you're basically just going to end up raising this section. And you can do that by using blocks underneath the roof rafters and then connecting the new porch rafters to the existing roof rafters to create a nice tie to the house. And again, you can see the seat cuts here. These are the seat cuts that would be used for these rafters here. Here. So basically what we're doing is just simply raising a section or lowering a section depending upon where the load bearing supports are going to be located. So here we have an offset here and we had to raise this section. If I was going to start here, then I would have to lower this section, which could be a little more difficult. You're going to want to start with the lowest point and then raise the other sections. Because if I had to cut a two or three inch deep seat cut, in this section here, that might not make the structural engineer happy. And here's the problem that our viewer has. They have an offset here, which means this beam right here is going to have to be raised to create a nice flat roof. And now if you're going to do this a different way, you don't want this to be flat, then you can simply lower this section of the rafters and then end up with an offset in the patio roof. Another thing that this individual is working with is going to be a small angled beam here. And you can see that it might be better to lose the angled beam and then just have the two separate sets of beams to support everything. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there. Lose this or use it as a non-load bearing connector. And another thing you can do is angle this beam. I can start it here and raise the other side. But that might be a little difficult for some of you. So I went ahead and mitered this beam here and then did a little funky thing over here to keep this beam level. And then I'm going to use a block or a shaped piece of lumber under this rafter here. And you can cut this in a variety of different ways. And then I'm going to have this beam right here sit on top of this section. And I don't think what I did is necessary, but I just kind of threw it in there. I've cut a lot out of this beam right here, and that might not be acceptable to an engineer. However, at the same time, I'm not going to have a lot of weight on this beam because it's small. If your beam is going to be longer, you might have to come up with a different method here. And then, of course, we can just go ahead and set the beam into the pocket that we created. And hopefully that helps. Now, the next part of the video, we're going to go over how you can adjust the beam height and slope for the patio. And between these two videos, it should provide you with a little more information to get this project done. And if it doesn't, let me know in the comment area. So let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at our post base connector, which should be about a quarter of an inch off the ground. I like to pour the concrete to the bottom of the metal here, but I have seen people raise them up a little bit if they need to. Now, in order to figure out the height of the posts that are going to sit in the connectors I just showed you, I think you could actually just grab a two by four, set it on top of the patio foundation, and then go all the way up to the top of the wall, and then subtract the height of the beam from either the two by four or the measurement that you got. And in our scenario, we are going to be using a four by eight beam. And my thought for something like this is the fact that we have a quarter of an inch slope on the patio slab already. And if we want the roof to slope a quarter of an inch per foot, then we can use this measurement right here to create a quarter of an inch per foot slope on the bottom and the top. And you should always check the measurements. Here we have seven foot seven and three sixteenths. And I believe most building codes require a minimum of six foot 10 inches. So in reality, we have plenty of room here. If I wanted to change the pitch of the roof to a half inch per foot, all I would need to do is take two inches 
off the top of the post. If I wanted to make a one inch per foot slope, I would simply adjust the post accordingly. And I believe that would be six more inches. And that would still provide us with over seven foot one inches of headroom clearance and help the water drain off of the roof a little faster. And of course, make sure that you have all of these calculations done before and not after you install your post. However, it might be better for you to put the post and beam into place if you're having a difficult time wrapping your mind around what I'm trying to do to figure out the slope of the roof rafters. The next step will be to place some type of a straight edge or your roof rafter or even a 2x4 or a 2x6 on top of the beam and on top of the framing plates to check the slope of the roof rafter. So not going to be too difficult to do. Just simply grab a level and in this case we're using a two foot long level and if we have a quarter of an inch per foot slope then the distance between the bottom of the level and the top of the roof rafter should be a half of an inch and for example if we had a one foot long level then the distance should be a quarter of an inch if we had a four foot long level then it should be one inch and another thing I do when building patios like these to speed up the process will be to nail one of the roof rafters into place at each end and then level or vertically plumb up the posts so that they are plumb in this direction or vertically straight. And even though I showed you this method, you might be better off just simply bracing all of the posts up and plumbing up the posts in both directions by using some type of bracing like this. And then setting your straight edge or your roof rafters on top to check to see if it's got the right slope. And again, use whatever is easier for you. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the connection here where you will need to make sure that it is lapped on the right side side or should I say the correct side of the ceiling joist because I actually built this model and had them lapped on the wrong side and I will show you what I'm talking about here in a few seconds and here is another cut you might need to get creative with you can install the patio rafter like this and then notch around it or just have the patio rafter sitting on top an inch and a half or two inches keep in mind that the minimum distance that a rafter can sit on top of a framing plate is probably going to be an inch and a half. So another thing that might help you when building your patio roof. And just another view to show you that the gable studs will also help to support the rafter here. If for whatever reason you believe you might have cut too much out of the rafter and it doesn't seem like a nice structural connection. Next up we will install all of our roof rafters and our pressure blocks. And we're going to set the blocks on top of the beam and they are going to go even or flush with the outside of the beam. And all of our roof rafters are going to be 16 inches on center and they are not going to have any seat cuts notched into them because the slope of the roof isn't really that steep or steep enough in my opinion to require one. But again, I will leave that up to you if that is a design modification you want to install on your project. Now let's take a look at the blocking here. And in this case, we're going to bring it out past if you have siding or stucco maybe it can go out past that a little bit and this is going to help us create a nice finished edge at the bottom here and as I mentioned earlier when I said that you need to make sure that these joists are located on the correct side you can see here that there's not going to be a problem with this one or this one but if this one was located on this side of the ceiling joist the rafter would be in the way and you could run into this same problem with roof trusses or other types of framing that might require some type of layout modifications for the location of your patio roof rafters so for example you might have 24 inch on center roof rafters like we have here and 16 inch on center ceiling joist like we have here and if 
for whatever reason the layout measurements for these rafters and joists change, then you might need to change the layout measurements on these also. Next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board. And this is probably going to be about the trickiest part of this entire project. However, by providing you with a few examples of it, you should be able to figure it out. And we're simply going to set this piece of fascia board on top of the framing plate to provide it with a nice strong connection. It's sitting on something solid. I know some carpenters might want to cut it here, but that's not always going to provide us with the best structural connection. Same thing here. And depending upon how far away this is from the other rafter, you might need to run this up a little further and create some type of a cantilever. Put our blocks in there and our blocks of course are going to line up with the blocks on this side with this roof and the blocks over here will line up with the other side. We can see here from the bottom how they are lining up and how they are lining up on the other side. So we have a nice clean finish there. And since this is only about eight feet, I'm not worried about putting any outlookers in here. And I've done this plenty of times where it seemed like it was nice and strong. View of the blocking and the fascia board there using two by eight for the fascia board. And this might be a more difficult cut for you to make. And I might even make another video on that and if I get enough people requesting it in the comment area I will definitely make another video on how to join these two pieces of fascia board together and of course the final phase for building a patio like this would be to install the roof sheathing except for the fact that I ran into a problem here now I didn't modify this I could have easily made this plywood bigger with my modeling program but I didn't want to do that all of this stuff is to scale and when I was all done installing the plywood here, I'm almost an inch short if I line it up with the front here. However, since the fascia board is an inch and a half thick and I'm still going to be able to get my perimeter nailing in here, I could simply move the plywood back, put a rip strip in the front, and everything should work out just fine. So this would be one way to solve this problem. Another thing you could do would be to simply grab your measuring tape and measure from here to here and see what the measurement is because you might be able to just bring the fascia your board back an inch or two whatever you need to solve that problem and hopefully that makes sense now I'm going to go ahead and go a little faster through this section of the video because it's running a little long so Another thing you can do will be to extend the length of the patio roof rafter so that you can get more nailing into the ceiling joist or the roof trusses, whatever you're going to be nailing it into. And another method might be to extend the block here a little farther so that you can add a little more structural support to this section of the fascia board. Or you can use a wider piece of lumber and some joist hangers. And of course, this one here is definitely going to be stronger. However, it might not be aesthetically pleasing to some type of an architect or designer because you got this big chunk of wood here. So again, just something else you can do to make what would otherwise be a structurally weak part of the roof framing into some Something a little stronger and we could always make this connection a little stronger by extending the beam a little further and then placing a block on top of it and then nailing the fascia board into the block and another thing you can do would be to chamfer the edges here and we will take a look at the other side to give you an idea of what the chamfered edges would look like if you don't like that square look and here we've extended the beam a little further past the fascia board so that the fascia board sits on top of the beam. And that is it for the video. Let's go ahead and wrap it up by just providing you with a few more views. Give you an idea of what it looks like from underneath. A nice clean look here. And you could always use T111 plywood or 1x6 tongue and groove if you want a different look from the bottom. And I would also like to point out that if you do use half inch plywood here, expect all of your roofing nails and staples to come through the roof sheathing. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to use 3 quarter inch plywood. Or at the very least, while you're installing your roofing, come down and take a look at what it looks like from the bottom after you've installed a couple of nails. And I am sure that I have plenty of more tips, but this video has ran way longer than most of my other videos, so I'm going to stop it right here. 
And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.